Hey everyone, this is Vicki with Metsy Table Studio here today with a video about style for My Creative Year Facebook group, hashtag My Creative Year. Um, I tried to find one of the earliest things that I've done and I'll show you how my style has changed, thankfully, and I feel like it's gotten a lot better. Wait till you see this. All right, so this is one of the first things I did. I had a little spiral notebook. I think it... Did it come from the Dollar Tree? Yes, this came from Dollar Tree. And I think, does it say the year in here? I can't remember if this is 2016, 2015, somewhere in there. All right, so I'm going to uh, see it's coming unglued. These are ideas that came from, I don't know. I, I don't know where I learned this from. Honestly, it's been so long ago, I can't remember. I'm sure it's from people that I used to follow or still possibly still follow on YouTube. Um, a lot of this had to do with learning how to use my stamps and doing painted paper. These are car stamps. I know I put these in later. So these are not as old as this stuff here. I cut tubes, um, old envelopes apart to make them look interesting and made little pockets with them. <laughs> when I look at this, I cringe. <laughs> I'm like, oh my word, did I really make this? Oh, ugh. this is a stamp. This is a road atlas. These are all painted papers that have been stamped on afterwards. This is some kind of a... I don't know. I think it's a uh, vellum envelope. That's what it is. And I just went through here and cut up random painted paper, glued it over this the pages in here, and used a lot of it for pockets. I used to swap pocket letters, and I took some of the ephemera that they sent in the pocket letters and put them in these pockets, and I've slowly been using them up so that I get rid of them. Um, what was This is a pocket. This is a pocket. I think... I, I don't remember who gave this to me. And there's a, a nice little saying inside there. And then, you know, more ephemera stickers oh good lord <laughs> it's just wow it's crazy and it's all over the place but this was the style of book that I started making Oy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know where I learned to do these from this is a Shannon Green thing with doing the circles I know where these came from these two I know that's Shannon Green the rest of this, I have no idea where it came from. Oy. I glued pages together, and this is before I realized that you should rip some pages out if you're going to use textures and bulky things, that I probably should have torn some pages out of here, but I did not. Here's another pocket. Here's something, another little tiny pocket. This, thankfully, has nothing on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was learning how to use texture paint. I mean, uh, learning how to use uh, the textured stuff. These, again, are stamps on watercolor paper where I took a class with Jennifer McGuire and a group of artists who showed you how to do watercolor on car for card making. So these were offcuts, and I just glued those in there. And again, this is uh, the circles that I learned from Shanna Green. This is just random. <laughs> Random craziness. <laughs> oh, and thankfully that we've reached the end. <laughs> so there's that one. The next thing is I learned from uh, Lindsay Wyrick from the Frugal Crafter how to make these. Now these are two that are glued together. It's one, uh, you take a 12 by 12 sheet, you fold it, you cut it in like an M shape or a H or whatever it was. I don't even remember. And then you make little books out of them. You can glue them in. This was done on August the 28th, 2015. So this is four years old. Boy, have I come a long way. Um, again, this is ephemera that was sent to me where, you know, I did the little pockets, some of my painted paper. Let me move you in closer. This one's kind of small. There we go. And I learned to calm it down a little bit to make it not quite as busy as it was. This is a um, 
bookmark that's paper that's slipped inside here. Again, these are things, it's a coat, coat room check, um, that came with pocket, pocket letters, the ephemera. My painted papers with the circles I, I learned from Shannon Green. A strip to slide stuff in through this way. Maybe for a tag or something. I don't remember why I did it. Um, again, painted paper. I cut this out and glued it on top of what was already here to give it a little depth. And again, I did it with this piece and this one. I think these might have those little thin pop dots underneath them. This is a pocket. And I took the things that I made with the 12 by 12 sheets of scrapbook paper and I glued them together. So there are two 12 by 12 pieces of scrapbook paper in here. These are, these are stamps that I had. Basically, all these, all this stuff is pockets. Our pockets, sorry. Buttons. Uh, done with a cuddle bug. Stickers that had those, I don't know, they call them enamel dots. Ladybug stamps and this is cut from the cuddle bug the ladybug on here is cut from the cuddle bug just it's really I think it's much more <laughs> toned down than the first one I showed you and this is those things where you put it in you can slide something in this one's really tight again another pocket has something in there from the um, pocket letter ephemera collection I have I try to make this look like a coffee cup since I had the coffee thing over here. Didn't do much with this one. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Evidently, I didn't do anything on some of the other sides of things. And then it's the cover is just slid on here. And it was, it was a bear to get in there, but that's what this is, is it just, you see, it's one of those, like what you did when you were a kid to cover everything in a brown paper bag when you were in school for the new books. So there's this. So this is a little bit better than the first one I showed you. <laughs> and now, and some of you have already seen flips of this. This is my um, Roy G. Biv book. How many... Signatures have I got in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Woo! And then the grow grain ribbon. And so my... The way I do glue books has changed. I try to not make them quite as busy. I pick color themes. I pick subject themes. Mostly. Sometimes. <laughs> Depends. But well, here's one that spans the both pages. It's all about flowers and plants. A couple butterfly or mo a moth in there. And this is about Paris. There's a ticket, the Eiffel Tower, a blue jay sitting on the ticket, the word Paris. And then I just love this face. I don't know if it's a Mona Lisa face or what they call the stamp, but I just love her. She is so cool. I think she's in almost every book that I make. This is about tulips and about flowers and bowls. Uh, I don't remember what this is. I, I, I don't see a theme here. At least not one I recognize. This is about water. Oh, sorry. There are people in a raft. If I go any closer, I'm going to... There we go. Raft. And a seahorse with some paper that was gifted to me by Carla at Cagefish. And I think she's the one who stamped this too. And gave this to me. I love the sun. There's a bird in a cage. 
I tried to make stuff a little more simple, not too busy. This is a rub on. See, some things are really simple. Just some paper over the orange and a cupcake. Ta-da, done. A shell. I mean, the, some of them are very simple. The Buddha, the tree of life, and the word peace. Birds. This is about tea. This one's about shells. Uh, I don't think there's actual theme on this one. Or this one. I try to stick to the same type colors, even though the subject, there's no rhyme or reason to try to make sure they're dark. I have no idea what's going on with this one. I like the A for the apple, but I don't know why I put her over here. I don't have a clue. Like I said, this book has been around a while. This fish is from Carla at Cage Fish, and I tried to make it so it looked like it was on the bottom of the ocean, and there's the sky. I guess I should trim this off it's a little long. This was red. Cupcakes and a woman half-dressed. <laughs> I don't know what this is about. Again, there's really not a theme for this one. Or this one. But I like the way they look together on the page opposites of each other. This was meant to be vintage. There was nothing for this one. This was just, um, I think this was from the art journal magazine, and I cut them out and just put the same flower out of the same thing, um, the same flower arrangement, and put a flower on each side of the page. Imperfection is beauty. This is all Joss paper and Chinese um, stamps. And again, the Joss paper was gifted to me by Carla at Cage Fish. These all came from Art Journaling Magazine. For this one, it had to do with the red and faces. This one was, I tried to repeat flowers on both sides. I love this. So simple and so pretty all by itself. This was pots. Birds sitting at a feeding pot. I glued each bird on there. I cut them out individually and glued them on there. And this is just, uh, I think, don't they call this a mother-in-law's tongue or a snake plant? I think they stand more upright. So this might be, you know, a variation of that. I can't remember. There is nothing for this. I think the fish and the cat came from Carla. I don't see a theme to this one. Oop. I don't think there's one for this one either. But this one had a bird with, their, with her eggs, and I cut all the eggs out of, I think these came from Graphic Fairy, and I cut all the eggs out, and then I happened to find a picture in a magazine of somebody holding the eggs. Butterflies or spreading your wings. And there's another fish. This was hearts. Uh, I'm not sure about this one, but I'm sure I intended it for it to be something. <laughs> this came out of Prim's magazine. 
This had to do with color from the houses and, and this paper repeating off of here. I think it was mostly meant to be like the red. This had nothing. I love this stamp. This had to do strictly with the ephemera that I had on hand that I wanted to use up. So that's all this one's about is ephemera that I had on hand. This was black and white. Can you tell? <laughs> I slapped everything I had that was small and black and white on these pages. <laughs> I had to cut that little teeny weeny angel out. And there's that beautiful face again. This was red flowers. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay in camera as best I can. Again, simple flowers. You really don't need to do a whole lot with that. Let's see what else is here. This was about women, pictures of women. And this was about the boats. The end. And I finished it in May of 2017. Let's see when I start it. Oh, I don't have a date in there, but this was, uh, oh, it created May 2017. So this is two years old, and I see the difference in my work. Oh, I hate to put this up here. I see the difference in what I'm doing, and my style is changing from harem scarum kind of mass chaos here to trying to rein it in a little bit here and then I think I got much better with this little book. Um, I have some other books that show how my doodle style has changed. I've changed the way I doodle. This used to be one book and I cut it in half. Um, and my doodling, even my doodling has changed. This is more detail-oriented than the doodles that I've done in the past. I mean, these are the past, but in the present, I don't do as much of this detailed doodling with color and that kind of thing. I like black and white. I mean, there's nothing wrong with color, don't get me wrong, but I really like the black and white better. But... You know, my style is ever-evolving, ever-changing, and I think everyone's is. I think if you don't change, that sometimes you get stuck in a rut in one spot, and then one day, all of a sudden, you're like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. And some people quit. Or some people go take classes to change their style to see if they can get an influence of another style to add to what they already know how to do. And I think that's really important that as an artist, you grow by taking classes. You grow by watching other people's YouTube videos. You grow by trying new things. And if you're not growing, then to me, you're dying. That, you know, you're, you're not expanding your knowledge of your craft. So there's my, my style and how it has been changing on how I make books over the last three or four years I'm really new to mixed media so um, I can see where my stuff has changed for me it's very pronounced doodling um, I see that in the beginning I did a lot of stuff with detail now I don't do as much detail with things it's more simplified it's not busy like this stuff is but I like this stuff but I also like the new stuff too all right, well, I hope you enjoyed my little flip-throughs of my um, style and how it's changed over the last three or four years. Change. Sometimes it's hard to take. Other times it's great. So do what works best for you. See you guys next month. Bye-bye.